I would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet today, the Arakwell people of the Bunjalung Nation, and pay my respects to the elders past, present and emerging. Are you ready to win at the game of life? Well, throw out that rule book and get down to the business of being the best and most authentic version of you. Welcome to the Human Design Podcast. We're changing the rules around success, abundance, purpose, love, and life, where we're creating a planet where everyone can thrive in a world that loves and supports each other. I'm your host, Emma Dunwoody, a qualified master coach, human design expert, podcaster, and entrepreneur that is living the life of my dreams, breaking all the rules while doing it, making a huge impact, and living my design and manifesting miracles on the daily. Join me as I break down and simplify everything you need to live in alignment with your human design, teach you how to recondition your unconscious mind for greatness, and to take back your power so you can manifest your heaven on earth and serve the rest of the planet at the same time time. It's time to give up the fear and step into your highest potential, to reach for the stars, to know and live your greatness. It's what you deserve and it's what the planet really needs from you. So buckle up and enjoy the ride. Hey, hey everyone and welcome to today's episode. I'm super excited today to share this solo episode with you. I'm going to reflect on some lessons personally from the Mexico retreat that I've just come off the back of. And I want to talk a little bit about these, I'm going to say trends that I'm seeing out in the world, and maybe you're feeling them too. So I want to kick off, of course, given that this is the human design podcast, I want to talk a little bit about something that was so powerful for me coming off the back of the Mexico retreat. Now, this is the second retreat we've done. It was incredible. We're just about to go into our next retreat here in Byron Bay. As I record this, it's next week. So I know that ahead of me, I've got this incredible adventure with awesome humans, transformational experience, and it's freaking exciting, let me tell you. But before I get to that one, I want to talk a little bit about how With human design, we often learn the knowledge and then we stay in this place of the knowledge. Our human design remains in our head or we kind of experiment with the doing and with the being, but we don't quite integrate it. And oftentimes you'll hear me say, look, you just have to do it. You have to take action. In fact, one of my favorite things to say is you actually need to claim your design. What do I mean by that? That when you're learning your human design and as you go through the process and the deeper you go, every time something resonates, and maybe even if it doesn't, because often what you're going to find, especially women, they will resonate so deeply with the shadow, but they don't resonate with the gifts and the higher expressions of their design. But what if you just chose to claim it? What if you actually chose to claim the high expressions of your design and then run your experiment? So be that human. Uh, make those choices, lean into those higher expressions and just experiment because ultimately that is your job, just to experiment, to discover what is true for you. However, if we are constantly focused on the shadow, and I even had one of the girls in our mastermind that's running at the moment, you know, she's like, wow, I just read the shadow of the gate 10 and it says that I'm too focused on my self-growth. Surely that's not right. And one of the things that is so important to understand is that even in our self-growth journey, if we are too inwardly focused, if we are constantly examining and analyzing everything about ourselves, then this isn't resourceful. This isn't helpful. This is so much in our mind. It's not in our body. It's not in the experiment. If you're in an experiment, you're trying things out. You're learning what works and what doesn't work. So, you know, ultimately I said to her, it's like, it's just like analysis paralysis. And instead of just constantly learning and looking in, you have to go out and experiment. Like you actually have to use these things in the external world. Um, And then you start to really dive into, okay, this is how I express these things. This is how these themes come to life with me. And it is so super important that we are focusing on our potential. So this is your invitation um just own it just claim it claim your design and act as if you're already expressing those higher potentials now 
If you don't know what the higher potentials are, you can always go and get the PDF that we have for all the gates um, on the website, and then you can see all the higher expressions. Uh, the other thing to do is, of course, get the get the gene keys. They are um, absolutely game changing. I take it everywhere. Um, okay. So the reason I'm bringing this up is because one of the things that I thought was so beautiful about the retreat is when we did the exit interview to really understand what everyone got from the retreat. And ultimately what I heard was people languaging my design. Yeah. Okay, so this is how I'm like, do you get what I'm saying? Are you with me? All right. So what that means is that I am actually expressing the energies, the gifts, the superpowers. They are landing and they are doing their work with the people around me. Let me give you an example of that. One of the things that people said a lot is fast transformation, like epic breakthroughs. That's my core talent in the 43. Now, this is something that I've noticed my entire coaching career is that whenever I work with someone, they get results fast. Um, you do the work, you transform fast because that's what my energy is holding space for. That's what I'm holding space for. You know, I can give you all the information, like a lot of the work with me, you get a lot of information. However, my emphasis is on surprise, surprise, the experiment, the just do it, the taking imperfect action, because this is where we really start to integrate. Now, all these breakthroughs that I kept hearing about, they were all because they were happening. Like you were actually, they were doing something. They were taking action. Maybe they saw themselves in a new light. Maybe it was a journal prompt that they were given. Maybe it was the partner that they, they were working with said something and they were like, oh my God, I've never seen it that way. But the point is, is that my energy facilitated that. Now, the other thing that people said a lot about or talked a lot about was community. And if you've been hanging around me at all um, in any of my containers, you know that community is such a huge part of this brand. And well, I have the 37 in my life's work, which is all about community. And one of the things I learned very early on was to ignore all the advice about interviewing people for your smaller um, containers, like my mastermind, uh, because I discovered that if I try to interview people and use my mind to decide who's meant to be in that group, it was never as powerful as if I just put it out there and let whoever wants to join, join. Now we've done the same with all of our retreats and the feedback we get from all of them is this is the most incredible retreat I've ever been on. Do you know the other thing that they both, they've said on both retreats so far is it's like, you know how when you go to a retreat, on retreat, there's always that one person, there's that one person that's just kind of irritating. Um, well, that person isn't here. And you know what I love about that is this is such evidence of community. This is such evidence that my energy is holding space for the correct, the exact puzzle pieces to come in for the journey together. So again, like I'm getting to see my design in real time reflected back at me. So it's that like, yes, I'm on the money, like I'm, I'm on the path. And I want to kind of put a note, like a little keynote in here, because even though the 37 is in my personality son, so my conscious side, I would never have thought that community was something that I was good at. In fact, I would never have thought that being a friend was something that I was good at. Like I'm a really great friend, always have been in a work environment, but being an introvert, I've tended on the more, especially in the past, self-isolated journey when it comes to friendship. However, that was my belief systems that was keeping me locked down on that, not actually seeing the gifts that, that lay inside of me. I mean, obviously one of my highest values is family and my family isn't just um, my, you know, my birth family and the people I'm related to, my blood family. Um, it's my, my business. My entire team is my family. Um, each one of these retreats are my family. Um, each container, my HDX, my mastermind, they're all family. That's the way I see it. But my mind and my mindset had kept me separate from that. So I would never have lent into the power of community that channels through me. I would never have done that without human design. 
Um, because there was also a part of me that was like, yeah, I don't want that to be my superpower. Um, so a large part of my journey has been surrendering to that and going, oh, yes, I do. Look how it really plays out. And for me, it's a very effortless process. You know, so much of it is holding space. So much of it is being like that highest expression, especially when you see in the smaller containers um, of tenderness, like being the divine mother. I always think like, I'm the one who's leading the pack. I'm the one who's holding the space. And at the same time, I'm encouraging everyone to step up and lead, everyone to, you know, be an equal part of this, this group or this community or what it is. So Again, this was something that was so that was so reflected back to me in these exit interviews. And then the last thing that I wanted to touch on was I have the gate 34, which is the gate of power in my north node. And this is something that has been a big player. So if you, again, if you've been around a, a while with me, you know that there's a great exercise that I do with the South Node and North Node. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go to my website. You can check it out um, because we've recorded the program so that you can go and do it yourself if you want to do it. And it really helps you understand not only your growth journey, but the, the growth journey of the clients that you're going, going to attract. Now, of course, everyone sat around and said, I feel like I'm in my power. I've never been so powerful. I've never been so in me, so me than I have before. And I think that this is just incredibly beautiful because again, I would never have thought, wow, like I talk about empowerment a lot, but actually seeing what that means in real time and getting it reflected back at me is just incredible and just makes my heart sing. And of course, the reflector that we had on the retreat was the cross of rulership, which is all about redefining power. So you can't make this stuff up. Um, and two of my coaches are the cross of rulership in my team. And, you know, redefining power is something that I'm doing it through empowerment. So again, you can't make this stuff up. It's so beautiful. The reason I tell you this story, guys, is because I want you not to, I want you to get out of your head and into your world. I want you to notice what's being reflected back at you. You know, notice like, where is my core talent showing up? Where is my life's work showing up? How is it showing up? What does it look like for me? What does it feel like for me? Because this is the way you're really going to integrate your design. Now, if you're a newbie, that's super fine. Maybe you don't even know what I'm talking about. And again, that does not matter. Um, we have so many resources here in this podcast, let alone everything you can find on our website. But at the end of the day, it's just about experimenting. So if you're brand new, just go to the podcast a few episodes ago and stop doing the three things for your type and start doing the three things for your type. And all of a sudden, you're going to start to see your design reflected back at you. You're also going to see where potentially you've been resisting who you are, um, and, and even better, where potentially you haven't even noticed that you've been in your power or that you've been expressing some of your superpowers. So I encourage you all, here's your invitation, go out and double down on your experiment, experiment and have a look at what's being reflected back at you. Okay, now I want to shift gears a little bit because I want to share some of the conversations I've had recently because they're conversations that have come up or questions that have come up a few times. So I just wanted to share them with you because, well, maybe you're experiencing this too. So one of the, the first one I want to talk about, it was actually the first person who kind of languaged it in my world was uh, Lucy Peel, who is our generator coach in HDX, who is just an epic human. So um, if you want to get an unpack or a reading done by a generator, you need to go check her out. She's on my website. She's epic. And she's a human that she... If you met her, you probably would think she's a manifesting generator just because she's got a lot of energy and she kind of does a couple of different things, you know, um, and she does all of them well. And she integrates um, a lot of her old school world and her new school world, if you like, the, the spiritual and the farming. Now, what she says is she's like, what is this? feeling I have, I feel like feeling like I'm in like a holding pattern, like I'm doing all of these things and being told at the same time, just hang on, just hang on, just hang on. Um, you know, there, there's something, you know, there's something that's coming, but we just have to kind of just keep doing the work and wait. Now, when she dropped that in the group, I was like, stop it. This is the exact message I've been getting probably for about six weeks now. Like, 
Yes, there's these big things happening. Yes, you can feel that there is a big shift about to happen. You know, I'm getting a lot of feedback about transformation at the moment for my personal journey. Um, A lot of change. And there's part of me that's like, right, well, let's just rip this Band-Aid off. Let's just get it done. Let's just move through it. But I've also been feeling this, this whole like, not yet. You have to wait. And I kept language, languaging at the retreat. I'm like, I just feel like there's going to be this big thing for me to respond to. So I just have to do the work. And at the moment, I'm very much feeling like I'm healing, that I'm going through a very deep healing stage, also like a quite a deep rest stage. Even though I'm very active, there's also this, this polarity that's happening about really deep, like I'm sleeping deeper. I'm almost almost obsessive. I'm not really an obsessive person, but I'm almost obsessive about all of my health and well-being things that I do and my supplements and my exercise and all of the things at the moment. So I'm just feeling like really nurturing myself, taking care of myself. And I know we talked about this on the Transits podcast as well. Um, But there is this feeling and a lot of my friends have been saying that. I know Elizabeth Ralph and I talked about it when I was visiting her, where we feel like there's this big transformation coming and we feel like we're, we're like on the money, but our mind or even maybe part of our body is like we're, we're trying to hurry it up, but we're also being held in this, this waiting pattern. So I would encourage you just to hold, you know, just wait. Um, if you're a, you know, a defined sacral being, then wait for something to respond to or a projector, wait for your invitation or your reflector, wait your 28 days. Or if you're a manifester, then wait for that source, that urge to move through you of creativity. Because I do feel like we're sitting on the precipice of something really great right now. So this is super, super exciting. We have also just flipped into the final quarter of um, the wheel um for human uh, the mandala for human design so we're now into this quarter of mutation which is all about transformation so things are going to start happening um trust your strategy and authority that's what i wanted to say on that now the other thing that i just kept hearing it was my own personal experience um and then i kept hearing it from all like clients or in whatever groups i'm in and that is that over the last couple of weeks, people have felt like they've came, come to this place of clarity. They knew, like, and that the sentence is, I knew what I had to come back and do. I knew what I was going to do. I, I was ready to do it. And then when a push came to shove, it just didn't, it just didn't materialize. Now, the old version of me, the performance coach, coach version of me would have said, what are you afraid of? Um, push through it, da, 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 whatever it is. However, Um, And in many cases, I still will. I will check in with my strategy and authority and I'll be like, "Mm," you know, like, am I just backing off because I'm afraid? Um, And I'm having the same experience now at the moment. And when checking in, I'm like, oh, no, it's fluid. And, you know, all these conversations I spent, as I said, time with Elizabeth Elizabeth Ralph. We've been having all these amazing conversations. You know, I felt like, you know, I even made a joke. One day I bought this drink and it said, it was a kombucha and it said, for greater clarity. I'm like, boom, I'm getting this. I want a, I want a dozen of these. Um, and, you know, like both Elizabeth and I were talking about these things going on in our lives and like we had clarity. And then we kind of went back to our lives and this actually happened with a couple of people on the retreat, went back to our lives and then all of a sudden nothing. Like maybe that clarity wasn't clarity. Maybe I'm – and. What I was telling everyone that reached out to me, they're like, God, am I just, am I afraid? Am I backing off? And the thing that I want you to understand is that sometimes we just have to be open to the flip-flop. We have to be open to the fact that maybe the flip-flop isn't unresourceful. Maybe this is just clearing up loose ends. Maybe we just haven't got everything we need from where we're at. You know, one of the conversations I said, well, really the way I look at it, um, can I pop on the table that perhaps we, you could just look at this as, well, that business model is done and there's this new business model that is birthing. How about that's just enough for now? Because, of course, the mind says, well, if that's done, if that's dead, if that's dying, we have to take action right now in this moment to end it. Um, and what I say is, especially if you're following strategy and authority, and this particular client was very much following strategy and authority, um, it was like, okay, I get that. 
Yep. So that's, that's dying. So my process over here is grieving. I'm grieving that I'm letting it go. And then I have this process of birthing this new thing and that's okay. And they can both kind of be there at the same time. That actually isn't flip flopping. That is just this place of like, okay, I'm really in liminal space. I'm really in transition and it's, it's, it's uncomfortable and it's awkward. And I feel like I don't have my footing. However, I can sit in this place. I can allow it to be a bit of this and a bit of that until it's less of this and more of that and none of this and all of that. All right. So again, I would encourage you if you're also in this place, which I feel goes very much hand in hand with this waiting thing that I'm seeing at the moment, just give yourself full permission just to be like, okay, well, maybe that thing is falling away and this thing is birthing, but I just have to let that unfold as it is and not judge myself for what looks like me changing my mind every five minutes because at the end of the day you are changing your mind but you need to follow your strategy and authority not your mind so let your mind do the flip-flop let your mind do and create meanings um, and then go back to strategy and authority and you know ultimately this person uh, this client that I'm talking about she then got an invitation for a whole new um, direction, if you like, for her business almost simultaneously. So it's amazing how powerful it is to be really okay with, okay, well, that is that is over. I, I feel like I have got a decision, but maybe it's not quite time to implement that. Um, maybe my mind will go back and forth. That's okay, but I'm just going to trust my strategy and authority. I'm going to trust in my case. I'm going to trust my, um, my emotional clarity. I'm going to trust my gut. Um, and then build this thing, you know, just focus on this thing. And then I think the ultimate part of that, like one of the things I've come to be really great at is manifestation. Um, on the weekend, I wrote myself a list of all the things that I needed to get and then put the list away. And I was driving, um, just before I drove home, I checked the list and everything was done and I hadn't checked it once. And in that moment, I was like, I feel like that's my life right now. As soon as I decide I want to manifest something, it's there. And one of the reflections I just want to give to anyone out there who's working on manifesting at the moment, um, maybe learning how to do it more consciously, more deliberately. One of my greatest lessons with manifesting is to stop trying quite so hard. <laughs> All the things that I try really hard and I you know, write about it every day and I focus on it every day and I put all this attention on it every day, they never come as quickly as the ones where I write the list and put it away. So that is just something else I want to put out there for you. I know very much for me, um, I'm a hugely powerful manifester when I stay the hell out of my own way. So another little tidbit just for you guys. The last thing I want to share with you today for all of you out there listening, I know that such a huge percentage of you that listen to this podcast, that are a part of my community, you are the leaders of tomorrow, you know, right now, but leaders of tomorrow. You are the creators of the new paradigm. You're the ones that are breaking the rules and remaking those rules. You're redefining all the things, you know, power, success, co community, you name it, you're redefining it. And obviously uniquely to your design. One of the things that as I sat in retreat last week, one of the things that I was very aware of was my natural ability to empower leadership within my community. And if you're a part of my community, you'll know this, that once you become a part of this community, then you're really a part of this community. So you might be called on or asked to be someone who contributes to the community. Give me, I'll give you an example. One of our longtime members, someone who's done a number of my programs, part of HDX, um, Adrienne, she does our new moon and full moon um, updates in HDX every month. Now, that for me is really important that I have this ability to, to bring the, the emerging leaders out in my community. And when I was on retreat last week, I just was sitting back and having a very surreal moment where I was sitting in this room and everyone was so empowered, empowered to speak their truth. Now, not only from a vulnerable state of like, I'm sharing my heart and soul with you, but also from a place of leadership, 
a place of how can I help you? Here's my guidance. Um, what do you need? How can we work together? And there was a moment where um, we did this really fun exercise that I can't talk about because we're going to be on a retreat next week and I don't want to ruin it for them. Um, and I was actually sitting in the client's seat. And the question that was asked of me, I can remember turning to um, Taylor and just looking at her and she said, right, are we going here? I'm like, yep, we're going here. And this is a really big thing for me. And I was like so open, so vulnerable sharing. And, you know, one of the, our incredible retreat members also has been on our mastermind. Um, she was then faced with the leader in tears, open hearted, vulnerable and looking for guidance. And the way that Tiffany navigated that, the way she stepped in, she was in her power. She didn't let it overwhelm her, scare her. She didn't start thinking about who she should be or, oh, shit, what should I do? What should I say? What will people think of me? She dove straight into her, what, what she knew, who she was. And it was a transformational experience for me. And this is the thing that I, as I was reflecting, I'm like, you know, it's not easy. It's not easy for an ego, any ego, to really honestly, truthfully lift up those around them. It's hard because we're so conditioned to think that if we do that, then others are going to take something away from us. You know, I got another message on this uh, yesterday from a dear friend of mine, Yvette Mayer, who is doing incredible stuff with marketing, with human design, and she's going to be teaching in HDX a whole course next year. I'm so excited. Um, and you know, like she's, she's like, I'm just so grateful. I'm so grateful for how you support my work and, you know, the way you talk about me and you promote me and you tell everyone, I'm like, yeah, of course, cause you're brilliant. You know, this isn't, I, I want to provide this for my community, but I don't want to do the work on that. I've got my lane over here that I really love. And it's this ability that all of us have inside of us just to put our egos aside and say, right, well, I trust, and this is something that has been so important for me growing my business. I trust that I'm enough. I trust that even though I'm going to bring in all of these incredible people to teach into my community, into this amazing, huge audience that Taylor and I and the rest of the team have built um, in this business that's going epic and global and all of those things. And, you know, I was trained that the course that I, my master coach course, when they did marketing, they were like, you need to be the one solution for everything so they don't go elsewhere. And I remember sitting in that class going, that just does not resonate with me. So it's been a journey for me to really have the courage to go, no, I feel really like I feel like this is really correct to bring everyone up with me to shine the light on all of these beautiful people. You know, like there's so many of you out there that now work with Elizabeth Ralph um, or I got another awesome message from one of the guys from Reese saying how he's working with Liz Zamorski right now. You know, everyone talks about Heather Ivany. She's going to be teaching at HDX next year too. Oh my God. Um, and, you know, so we're helping all of these people completely transform their lives. And it has to be, for me, it's a must that my ego is out of the way because I know that I'm enough and the work that I'm providing is enough. And I also know that the work that all of these humans um, are doing is really freaking important. So my 37, my line four in my culture says like, these are the people that I'm going to bring into my world. I'm going to support. I'm going to grow. I'm going to empower. I'm going to champion. And in the same breath, I'm going to keep telling my ego, we're, to we're totally safe here. We've got this. No one can do Emma Dunwoody, you know, like let them do them and I'll do me. And I have 100% faith that this is what the new paradigm looks like. At the end of the Mexico retreat, I stood up at the end of the table and I said to them, thank you. Thank you for this opportunity to witness, to experience what the new paradigm is going to look like and feel like and be like, because each one of those people fit so perfectly with the other. And this was because they were so in their power. They were themselves. They loved and trusted each other. We fully supported each other. We understood everyone played a very specific role and no one could replace that. And to watch 
this entire group see the beauty, the power, um, the authenticity, the truth, the magic in each individual. Well, that was freaking amazing to witness. And I'm so incredibly grateful that I get to witness this all the time in my community, in my work, in HDX, in the mastermind. And I really believe that this is the future. I believe that there will be peace and harmony and we're going to see these things much faster than we think we're going to. And as I said earlier, you guys listening to this, well, you are probably right at the forefront of this. You are the change makers. You're the new paradigm creators and keeping your focus on your truth, your authenticity and the potential and possibility for Mother Earth and the human race. Well, that's our work. That's our work. Our work is not to focus on who fucked up what and who's to blame. Our focus has to be on how can we do it better? What needs creating? How can we support each other? And, you know, a lot more resourceful focuses. So that's it from me today. I trust you got what you needed from today's episode. Um, I absolutely love you guys. I'm so incredibly grateful for all the listeners and everyone who reaches out all the time telling me how much they love the episodes how much they love the podcast and please make sure you share it with as many people as you can so that we can get our work out into the world so we can create this whole new paradigm. Thanks, beautiful humans. I look forward to having you on the next podcast. Bye for now. Thanks everyone for being here all the way to the end of the podcast. I hope you got lots of value out of it. I certainly had a lot of fun doing it. Could I please ask that you share this podcast with friends if you found it valuable? And also, bonus points, could you leave a review for me as well on Apple? It would be greatly appreciated. If at any point you would like to be on the podcast or you've got questions that you'd like me to discuss on the podcast, by all means, get on my socials and DM me. Everything you need is there in the show notes. Have an awesome day. Bye for now.